Hi, I'm Emily, Digital Marketing Officer at Bumblebee Conservation Trust. Today I'm going to take you around one of my local community owned orchards. I'm going to explain a little bit about why it's so good for wildlife and of course bumblebees. This small plot of land is Wick Community Orchard. It's in Chichester and it was taken over by volunteers in 2013 when it was essentially just a forgotten patch of brambles and rubbish. Now it has 17 fruit trees, a wood chip path, a beautiful hedge and lots of wildflowers so it's great for bumblebees. It's only a small area but it really helps to support local wildlife and especially pollinators in an urban area when they might not get many other wildflowers and um, they will rely on people's gardens um, which are all around here so it's a really important site to be able to provide connectivity, forage and nesting opportunities. So it's the wrong time of year to capture any apple blossom but of course in the spring this apple tree will be full of beautiful white and pink flowers which is amazing food for solitary bees and of course our bumblebees. It's important to know that we actually rely on bees to ensure that our apple trees bear fruit. How? Well, some apple trees require cross-pollination so they need pollen from other apple trees to fertilise their own flowers and that's where the bees come in, transferring pollen from one tree to another. So it's important to have more than one variety of apple tree on each plot so you can have eaters, cookers, crab apples and ensure that they all flower at the same time and these are called pollination partners. So the ground on the orchard is left very wild in the summer and this allows wildflowers like creeping buttercup to grow all across on the floor which is brilliant for bumblebees and solitary bees and other pollinators. At the bottom of this fruit tree we've got foxgloves with the beautiful spotty purple flowers and they're tubular flowers so the nectar is stored deep inside which means only long-tongued bumblebees can get in there like our garden bumblebees and common carder bees. We've also got some hedge woundwort which is this purple sort of spiky flower head. So all along the southwestern side of the orchard is this lovely bit of nettles and grasses and if you're thinking from a bumblebee's point of view that's brilliant nesting opportunity so we've got common carder bees who like to nest in sort of long tussocky type grass. On the other side of the orchard we've got this lovely native hedge which is flowering with dog rose at the moment but there's also blackthorn, elder, hawthorn and these all flower at different times of the year which is great for bumblebees because they need flowers from March to October um, but some earlier and some a bit later than that and at the base of this tree is another foxglove this time it's a white one Foxgloves are actually quite poisonous to humans and pets as well, but they can actually be used as medicines for congestive heart failure and other heart problems. I love that the grass either side of this path has just been left to grow a bit longer than usual. Um, it's not mown within an inch of its life and um, it's just allowing wild herbs like mint to grow at the base of this tree and wildflowers. So we've got Herb Robert here with the little pink flowers. We've also got a compost heap at the end of the orchard here which provides a really good opportunity for any of the underground nesting species like white-tailed bumblebees, buff-tailed, um, early bumblebees and garden bumblebees. I think a garden bumblebee has just gone into the foxglove. Yeah, there we go. Traditionally, small orchards were once an integral part of our countryside and on the outskirts of towns. But after the Second World War, the changes in agriculture meant that we lost loads of these orchards and fruit trees and of course the pollinators that went with them. So it's really important to plant native fruiting trees to support our pollinators. Even if you only plant one or two fruit trees in your garden, it could help to support hundreds of pollinators in your area. So if you're feeling inspired to plant your own orchard or perhaps just a couple of fruit trees, bumblebees and solitary bees will love you for it. Fruit trees like apples just need lots of drainage so they don't like very wet soil. They need to be planted in the winter when they're dormant and they also need lots of sun and lots of shelter from the wind as well. 
I think what's so special about this orchard too is that it's not just about the fruit trees, it's about planting sympathetically for wildlife, uh, giving them just an area to call their own really. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this little tour around my local community orchard.